what kind of signal in our lifetime, what kind of thing you, do you think might happen, could possibly happen, where the scientific community would be convinced that there's alien civilizations out there? Like what, uh, so you already said maybe a strong infrared signature for something like a Dyson sphere. That, well, yeah, that's possible. That that's also to some degree a little bit ambiguous um, because right, that's that's the challenge. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Is where your brain would be like you as a scientist would be like, I know it's ambiguous, but this is really weird. Yeah, I think if you had some, I can imagine something like a prime number sequence. Or a mathematical sequence like the Fibonacci series, something being broadcast. Mathematically as, provable that this is not a physical phenomenon. Right. I mean, yeah, prime numbers is a pretty good case because there's no natural phenomena that produces prime number sequences. It seems to be a purely an abstract mathematical concept, as far as I'm aware. And so if we detected uh, you know, a series of radio blips that were following that sequence, it would be pretty clear to me, or it could even be, uh, you know, Carl Sagan suggested that pi could be encoded in that, or you might use the hydrogen line, but multiply by pi, like some very specific uh, frequency of the universe, like a hydrogen line, but multiply it by a abstract mathematical constant that would imply strongly that there was someone behind the scenes operating that. Um, uh, in, but, uh, sorry, stored in which phenomena though? So in that, in that case, I'm thinking of a radio wave, but the information, I mean, we kind of toyed with this, um, uh, idea in a video I did about hypothetical civilization on my channel. But one kind of fun way, I, I do want to bring the this conversation towards time a little bit and thinking about um, not just looking for life and intelligence around us right now, but looking into the past and even into the future to some degree or communicating with the future. And so we had this fun experiment of imagining a civilization that was born at the beginning of the history of the galaxy and being the first and what it would be like for them. And they were desperately searching for evidence of life, but couldn't find it. And so they decided to try and leave something behind for future civilizations to discover, to tell them about themselves. But of course, a radio signature is not going to work there because it has have a power source and that's a piece of machinery. It's going to eventually break down. It's going to be hard to maintain that for billions of years timescale. And so you wanted something that was kind of passive, that doesn't require an energy source, but can somehow transmit information, which is hard to think about something that satisfies those criteria. But there was a proposal uh, by one of my colleagues, Luke Arnold, which uh, inspired a lot of us in techno signatures. And he suggested that you could build artificial transitors. So you could be build she sheets of material that transit in front of the star, maybe one a uh, thin sheet passes across first, then two, then three, then five, then seven, so you could follow the prime number sequence of these. And so there'd be a clear indication that someone had manufactured those, but they don't require any energy source because they're just sheets of material in orbit of the star. They would eventually degrade from micrometeorites, and maybe their orbits would become destabilized, but they should have lifetimes far exceeding the lifetime of any uh, battery or mechanical electronic system that we could at least with our technology, conceive of building. And so you can imagine then extending that and how could you encode not just a prime number sequence, but maybe in the spatial pattern of this very complex light curve we see, you could encode more and more information through 2D shapes and the way those occultations happen. And maybe uh, you could even encode uh, messages and, and in-depth information from, you know, you could even imagine it being like a, a lower layer of information, which is just the prime number sequence, but then you look closely and you see the smaller divots embedded within those that have a deeper layer of information to extract. Um, and so to me, something like that would be pretty compelling that there was somebody who would manifest, unless it's just a, 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 a very impressive hoax, um, that would be a pretty compelling evidence for this civilization. And, and actually the methods of uh, astronomy right now are kind of marching towards being able to better and better detect a signal like that. Yeah, I mean, to some degree, it's just building bigger aperture in space. Mm -hmm. The bigger the telescope, the the finer ability to detect those minute signals. Do you think the current sort of the scientific community, another weird question, but just the observations that are happening now, do you think they're ready for a prime number sequence? In in the, um, sort of if, if, if we're using the, the current method, the transit timing variation method, like, do you think you're ready? Do you have the tools to detect the prime number sequence? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's 
200,000 stars that Kepler monitored, and it monitored them all the time. It took a photo of each one of them every 30 minutes, measured their brightness, and it did that for four and a half years. And so you have already, and Tess is doing it right now, another mission. And so you have already an existing catalog, and people are uh, genuinely scouring through each of those light curves with automated machine learning techniques. We even developed some in our own team that can look for weird behavior. We wrote a code called the weird detector, for instance. That, <laughs> of course. You know, it was just the most generic thing possible. Let Don't assume anything about the signal shape. Mm. Just look for anything that repeats. The signal shape can be anything, and we kind of learn the template mm -hmm. of the signal from the data itself. And then we it's like a template matching filter to see if that repeats many, many times in the data. And so we actually applied that and found a bunch of interesting stuff, but we didn't see anything that was the prime number sequence, at least in the Kepler data. That's 200,000 stars, which sounds like a lot, but compared to 200 billion stars in the Milky Way, it's really just scratching the surface. So one, because there could be something much more generalizable than the prime number sequence, it's ultimately the question of a signal that's very difficult to compress in the general sense of what compress means. So maybe as we mm. get better and better machine learning methods that automatically figure out analyze the data to, to understand how to compress it. Just You'll be able to discover data that's for some reason is not compressible. But then, you know, compression really is a bottomless pit because like, that's really what intelligence is, is being able to compress information. Yeah, and, and to some degree, the more you, I would imagine, I don't work in compression algorithms, but I would imagine the more you compress your signal, um, the the more assumptions that kind of go on behalf of the decoder, the more skilled they really have to be. You know, some of the, a, a prime number sequence is completely unencoded information essentially. But um, if you look at the Arecibo message, they were fairly careful with their pixelation of this simple uh, image they sent to try and make it as interpretable as possible to be that, even a dumb alien would be able to figure out what we're trying to show them here because there's all sorts of conventions and rules that are built in that we we tend to presume when we design our messages. And so if your message is assuming they know how to do an MP3 decoder, a particular de uh, compression algorithm, I'm sure they could eventually reverse engineer it and figure it out, but you're you're making it harder for them to get to that Point. So maybe I always think you, know, you probably would have a two-tier system, right? You'd probably have some lower tier key system, and then maybe beneath that, you'd have a deeper compressed layer of more in-depth information. 